Good morning to everyone. Welcome to my online class presentation. And today's session is for the honor second year student. At first, I would like to introduce myself. I am Polly Rani Shaha, assistant professor. And my today's topic is about uh, the famous poem by Parsifal Shelley, To a Skylark. You see the name of the topic that is To a Skylark by Parsifal Shelley. And it is a a uh, very famous poem or uh, lyrical poem of the Shelley and this poem is about a word and this word is not an ordinary word it is a uh, one kind of spirit according to poet and this word is a symbol of pure joy and happiness before going to start my lesson i would like to say something about about the poet that is Shelley Shelley was born in 1792 and died in 1822. He drowned in, the, in a sudden storm while sailing in Italy at the age of 30. And he regarded one of the ma major English romantic poets and he also regarded by uh, some critics that is, he is the finest lyrical poet, lyric poets in the English literature. And he is very well known for his long form poetry, especially long lyrical poem. And before start my lesson, I want to say something about the what is ode. What is an ode? Ode is a, is a one kind of poem, and in which a person or a speaker or a poet express his own feeling specially strong feelings about something for something or somebody something uh, can be abstract idea or some abstract things or some body uh, or someone and it expresses a strong feeling of love or respect for someone or something it is a lyrical poem and it maintains the rhyme scheme and um, it, uh, this poem also expresses the personal feeling, personal emotion and universal themes are united. And, and this word ode is derived from the Greek word which means the song and usually it accompanied by a dance. This is the main characteristics of the poem that is ode. That, uh, this ode expresses strong feelings of the poet or the speaker or the person and especially uh, personal feelings and it blend the personal emotion and universal themes and it is a one kind of lyrical poem it may be long or short and it maintains uh, the rhyme scheme and uh, to a skylark is a long poem and it has this poem has 21 stranger of five lines each that is every stranger has five lines and total of uh, total lines of the poem uh, 105 lines and meter or the rhyme scheme is a b a b b and this poem published in 1820 that is the uh, some uh, information of the poem poet uh, sorry poem to a skylark and what is the main idea of the poem and this is the main idea of the poem that is the love of the poet or the bird song uh, the skylark song and he compares the bird to a number of things and this uh, poem opens up with the speaker that is the poet calling out to a bird uh, which he calls a spirit and, and he tells the bird how much he loves its singing but this um, and then he describes how it after that he compares the birds song to a branch of different things a star he compared the bird song to a star or a rose um, the planet of venus a thought of the poet a maiden a glow worm and uh, he uses the figure of speech of a simile and metaphor 
to uh, make the comparison and uh, first uh, in every stanza he uses <coughs> sorry he uses different things to uh, compare the bar song uh, that is uh, the <coughs> even to a star to a rose to the planet venus to a, the thought of the poet uh, and the love of wine and many other things and then he starts to talk about how all, all of the beautiful things that the human beings make cannot compare to the song of this bird and he thinks that uh, the make uh, that is uh, the human beings make the things cannot be compared uh, to the song of the skylark and he thinks that the, that is the song of the um, song of the skylark is more beautiful than the human beings making things all human things according to the poet all human songs are said and but the uh, bird song is just pure joy and he thinks that and he established uh, these uh, thoughts in his poem to the to a skylark and finally he dreams uh, the speaker that is the poet dreams of being able to sing with as much song and uh, joy and uh, freedom at this happy bird he dreams of singing with as much uh, song and freedom as the bird the skylark and and that uh, that is the main idea of the poem and um, and this uh, poem uh, this poem has actually uh, have uh, no plot and uh, this poem it is a one kind of observation and this is a one kind of bounce of observation about a single idea that is the song of the bird skylark bird and description of the song of the bird and this uh, this is the uh, main plot of this um, poem and the summary that is the summary of the uh, before uh, my start to listen i said that uh, it has 21 stanza and it is a long lyrical poem and every stanza uh, it is quite difficult to um, uh, to summarize the every stanza line by line and it is uh, quite impossible to explain the uh, every line in this class uh, so i summarize uh, the uh, stranger one to five and then i can uh, understand i can make the understandable for you and uh, the first stranger that is uh, actually addresses uh, the bird as a spirit and uh, that is a uh, beautiful and it is uh, looks uh, it uh, comes from the heaven uh, he thinks that it is one special supernatural bird and so this is why he calls it it is a one kind of spirit and uh, there is um, something holy about the bird and it sings from above the sky it is a, a spirit of uh, it is a spirit of joy and uh, happiness and the second stranger uh, we see that it rises that is the skylark rises from the earth towards the heaven and uh, he thinks that uh, it comes from uh, heaven or near it and uh, he keeps moving it keeps moving higher and higher the poet captured the joy and freedom of the bird singing and swearing and singing and swearing and he uh, actually he concentrated the main idea uh, that is the joy and freedom of the bird in the third stranger uh, we see he talks about uh, the beauty and the brightness of the sky. He speaks about the freedom and pleasure of movement without any effort uh, of the skylark, a spirit which is full of energy and freshness, uh, full of possibilities and new beginning. He thinks that uh, the, so, uh, the skylark is a, a spirit and it is full of energy and freshness, full of possibilities and new beginning. And in the uh, fourth stanza, we uh, see that the poet is saying about uh, the way the skylark flies in the sky. One feels even the evening that has turned pearl, uh, purple melt around it. it uh, he compares the 
uh, in the fifth stanza in the fifth stanza the poet uses the metaphor he compares the sound of the arrows that comes from the silver sky and to, to the six to uh, ten stranger he thinks uh, that uh, that is the poet says that the voice of the skylark is very powerful and he uh, it can be heard from the on the earth and and the sky and the only its sound is uh, hearable and uh, and in the second uh, seventh stanza he compares song with the raindrops coming from the rainbow cloud in the eight uh, stanza he compares uh, actually the poet uh, uses many um, uh, similes or metaphor uh, to compare the, the song of the skylark he loves the uh, song of the skylark he thinks that it is a, a one kind of a pure of joy one kind of pure of joy and happiness the skylark so he uses uh, the figure of speech that is simile and metaphor in the eight in uh, eight stanza and uh, that is he compared the skylark to a poet. poet that is the thought of a poet is the song of the bird and the poems of the or the poet uh, have the power to make the people see the world in a new and important way in the 18th eight stanza he thinks uh, he compares the song of the skylark uh, to a the thought of a poet that is uh, every um, uh, that is both of the song of the bird and the thought of the poet have the power to make the people see the world in a new and important way and in the nine uh, nine stanza he compared to a maiden in a high tower of her, her palace in the tenth stanza he compares with the beautiful uh, singing sky spirit to a glow worm and <coughs> many things many other things in the <clears throat> compare the skylark uh, to a hidden uh, natural beauty in the next stanza he compares uh, with the uh, that is uh, 12 um, 11th stanza uh, he compares with the trample chant the hymnal chorus in the uh, and the spring rain the song of love and wine and uh, many other things in the next stanza he thinks that the skylark song surpasses um that is uh, sorry that is uh, the next stanza he uh, thinks that the skylark song surpasses all earthly things in joy and loveliness it is more delightful than the gentle sounds of the flowers opening uh, under uh, the soft things spring rain uh, songs of uh, love or wine of morn of marys and victory in word are absolutely dull in comparison with the bird song the bird knows more about the mysteries of life and death than have been revealed in our life that is a uh, 11 um 11 to 17 stanza he thinks that the song of the bird is uh, more uh, be more joyous or uh, it uh, uh, gives us more happiness uh, in comparison to the uh, songs of love or wine or the songs of marys and victory uh, in word and absolutely they are dull in comparison with the bird song the bird knows more about the mysterious of uh, mysterious things of life and they then uh, we have no that is the uh, human beings know about the mysterious uh, mystery of our life and uh, last uh, stanza that is uh, the 18 to 21 and uh, this in the last stanza the bird song is better than he thinks that the poet thinks that the bird song is better than all the wisdom and rest in books and uh, he thinks that uh, uh, all the wisdom all the um, all the treasure that is um, that is enriched in the book or the things everything is uh, everything is in comparison to the bard song is better than everything the bard song uh, he thinks that we, you know the romantic poet 
uh, always use the exaggeration or hyperbole to express their feelings about a uh, natural object so he uses many types of similes and metaphors uh, to present our to present the songs of the uh, songs of the scholars before us the poet at the last um, stanza the poet appeals to the bird for a portion of his joy so that uh, to give him the uh, the por little portion of his of his joy that is he thinks that this joy is pure and uh, so that he might win the heart of the man all the world over with with his poem as he himself in being uh, listened by Esau. Even if man's life free from pride, fear, or hatred, this song would not have been so sweet as the bird song. He thinks that every uh, if he thinks that if the man's life is free from a, any type of uh, pride, fear, hatred, but uh, then can then cannot be wouldn't be have been so sweet as the bird song. And uh, so he appeals to the bird uh, skylark uh, for a, uh, to give him the uh, sweetness or the joyous uh, mood of his song. Uh, that is. And that is so that uh, he might win the heart of the people, all over the people, uh, with his poem. Because uh, if um, uh, if uh, because he thinks that and uh, its song is more beautiful, more joyous, more um, hap uh, it is a more um, it is a more like uh, than anything, worldly anything. Uh, so he appeals, and that is the summary of the poem. And uh, that's all. Thank you.